Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for August 9th of 2024. So thank you who are here for being here live. I accidentally set the live for 9 p.m. and not 9 a.m. So hopefully everybody knows that we're usually at 9 a.m. So <laughs> again, those of you that are here, thank you for trusting your instincts and being here at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. All right, so we will go ahead and jump in the heart space here. Hey, Stephanie, I'm glad that you are here this morning. <laughs> well, and everybody else can watch uh, watch secondhand here today, so because um, we do record everything and put it on YouTube. So anyway, um, we'll just go ahead with the uh, the four of us that are here live and everybody else can catch up later, but we'll go into the sacred space of the heart first. So, um, and if you are new to 50 Questions Friday, we do a thing called the Trinity Breath, where we move our consciousness from the head into the heart. So 50 Questions Friday really is a it's a safe sacred space. It is a dimension all on its own. It is a space that we can come to. We step into the heart space. And sometimes we do other healings, clearings, meditations. But no matter what, when we step in here, it is a beautiful space to just hang out and be in. So um, we'll get started by going into the heart space. So closing your eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Now imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that energy, that light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart and just being present with the earth. Allowing yourself to fully ground in, not only to the earth, but into yourself and into this moment. Next, connecting with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. The third breath in this Trinity breath is where we bring them both together within us. The energies swirl and twirl with you and you send them right back out. So you become a column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. So I guess I'll do some announcements here. Um, gosh, our, our 14 year anniversary sale is still going on and we still have some of the light body activator rings. So as long as our sale is going on and you'll know that when you land on twisted sage, you'll say the 14th year anniversary sale for as long as the sale is going on, you'll receive one of these rings with every order. Um, so as soon as the sale is done, you know, we're out of light body activator rings. We should have enough rings to get through the weekend. So, um, this weekend you should still be able to access that sale and the free light body activator ring. Um, which we can certainly talk about that once more today. So let's see some of the other announcements. Um, of course, we have the new light expansion bangles out, which are really phenomenal. Um, we are bringing the wisdom rings back. Now, I know we just had the wisdom rings on clearance, the two inch and the three inch. Um, but, you know, we are in a time right now, uh, humanity, for such deep release that the wisdom fields are very much needed in the world. And not everybody is down with getting a wisdom wand because it gets to be a little bit too magic, woo-woo, Harry Potter style or whatever it is. Um, you know, and I understand. So just using a simple, a simple wisdom ring is phenomenal for holding the space to help you not only to remind you that those things are only temporary. You don't need to carry them, that you can release them. But then the ring is also the, the, um, the tool that you can use to do the release work. So here's one of the new wisdom rings. It's not polished up or anything yet, but basically they hold that same wisdom energetic, but they also have that expansive light in it. And so with the wisdom rings, um, 
you know, just keeping it on the person is great, but you can do plenty of exercises of release. Like one of the things that we've always done is take whatever it is that comes up in the heart space, blow it through the ring. It is simply, it is simply the ceremony for the mind. Whatever your ceremony of the mind is to release the things that no longer bring you joy or that no longer serve you, that is the way to do it, is any kind of ceremony with yourself. We also teach the soul altar, um, which that's one of our meditations. Or you can simply use one of the wisdom rings, take what comes up, and simply blow through it. So anyway, the wisdom rings will be back again here next week, possibly over the weekend. Uh, we'll have those relisted again. So that's one of the announcements. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're going to be doing the um, the tool of the week and the webinars on the tools again. So starting next week, we're going to be doing the Betar Coil webinar where you can join us live. It's like a 50 questions Friday, but basically I just go through talk about the beta coil explain some of the uses and then at the end we take questions so then if we haven't answered any of the questions throughout the webinar you'll have an opportunity to ask questions on the beta coil so we will have a grand sale on these next week so look for that coming in the email possibly this weekend or early next week with the date and sign up for the webinar so i think that is all the announcements for twisted sage today um and again, thank you for the rest of you who just popped in here. And yeah, I know we're 12 hours early here for our, well, I scheduled this 12 hours late. So let's see. I'll go ahead and answer some questions from the internet. Hello, I'm new to your tools and the energies they hold. Is there a particular tool or energy best suited for clearing crystals? So... You know, the wisdom rings are fantastic for the crystals. Um, just about any tensor ring, well, actually, truly, any tensor ring will clear crystals. Um, but some of the newer energies that we have, like the wisdom and forward, like the wisdom, the highest potentials, the beta coil, these rings are not only clearing crystals, but what we're seeing is that it's bringing more of the consciousness into the crystal. And that's really where we see like the beta coil, um, you know, and, and the water rings when they're working with water, we see that the real magic is, is that it's bringing more of the consciousness and life of the water back into itself. And truly that is what is taking place with the crystals. Now there's many ways that you can work with the crystals with the tensor tools. One of them is the wisdom wands. You can run energy into the crystals, you can clear them. And again, it brings more of their consciousness and light into it. Um, placing it within a tensor ring. The tensor field generators, um, gosh, I don't have a generator on me. I have a Gaia sphere that I wear most of the time. Basically, with any of the um, structures, the spheres, like this one's the Gaia sphere with the six rings. We also have the tensor field generator that has the four rings. Now, the tensor field generators, when you put a crystal inside of the tensor field generator, oh, I don't have a small enough crystal to fit in here, but basically, when you place the crystal inside of the generator, the consciousness and information of the crystal is then broadcast throughout that whole area, that whole field of influence that the generator has. So some of these tensor field generators have up to a 12 mile sphere of influence. You place your crystal inside, it can broadcast the energy, information, consciousness of the crystal throughout that whole area. So yeah, the, the crystals love the tensor tools um, a lot. They are definitely good friends. All right. So another question uh, that we have here, I have the infinite light 2.0 pendant, which I've been working with. Sometimes I feel quite anxious and uneasy when working with it. Is that just part of the process of releasing and clearing? What is the best way to embody my light more fully when working with this tool? So whether you're working with the infinite light 2.0 pendant or any of the tools, um, 
yes, there is going to be a release that is occurring. And you, sometimes, yes, that can come up as anxiety because what we are releasing within these fields is so far out of our perception. You know, we're not going to, you know, as we're in these fields and releasing, we're not going to have the experience of that experience, you know, because it's like, um, you know, gosh, when I first started doing clearing, I did a past life regression style to clear some lifetimes. You go back, you get to have the experience, which is no fun, especially if you have a lifetime of on the battlefields. And so, you know, it's not like when you are doing the clearing and release that you re-experience an old trauma. It can come up as an anxiety or an uneasiness in the field. You just sense and know something. So when anything comes up in your field that brings you that anxiety, that uneasiness, just stop, take the three breaths and go into the heart space. And when you go into the heart space, simply take another breath to release it. So you're just stepping into the heart where you are where you work with your light. This is the seat of the soul, the heart. So when you step into the heart and you are making your choice to release what is in your field that is causing you the uneasiness. So when you make the choice to release that, you take in the breath, you release, you are letting it go. Because otherwise, sometimes things can get stuck for lack of better words, in our field. And they can cause all kinds of things. I mean, these, these things in our subtle energy fields can affect us physically. You know, as energy healers, workers, after the, over the past four or five years, we've seen so many things that are connected to old traumas and not just this lifetime. So, it is just the simple releasing of these things. And it is what is occurring already. The tools actually bring a lot more grace and ease. And that is another thing that if you are having issues with anything that you are going through, the dark night of the soul, the release, the whatever it is, again, stop going to the heart space and just simply, for one, you can talk to the body. Because a lot of anxiety too, you guys, comes up as the body is going through changes because we are going through deep, deep changes on the physical as well as the emotional, the spiritual, the energetic, the within the body, um, the nervous system, the light body. I mean, there's so much change going on that yes, it can come up as anxiety. So another thing you can do is talk to you, talk to your body and talk to you, be in the heart and just say, Hey, you are okay. And that's it too, is that when you are caught up in the middle of the release work and you have the anxiety and the things coming up, it seems a little overwhelming, but truly just remember that it is just a passing thing that the more that you can simply allow it to be, allow it to come through and not hold on to it. What I mean by holding on to it is when you start to fight it or resist it, it causes a lot more pain and suffering in the body and, and the person. So anything that comes up, if you hold on to it, it is going to hurt more. So I know it's kind of a, hmm, it's, it's kind of goes against what you would think to do. Um, but what you do is just simply allow it to be and you just let go. You allow it to flow through because again, this is just a temporary thing that's flowing through, flowing out, flowing past. And if you just allow it to flow through, it's a lot more ease than if you grab onto it, fight it, try to fix it, try to heal it. So, um, Yes, working with the tools, be in the heart space, be in a space of allowing. And it's very individual for every person. So the infinite light pendant usually doesn't bring up a lot of things for a lot of people, but sometimes it does. Um, so it really is between 
you and and you on how the tools function for you. Um, but again, the wisdom tools I feel are the best for doing that clearing of lifetimes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. Would you consider making a tensor ring to help people to sleep? It's such a hard one for many people. So, you know, we do make the practitioner rings. Now, not all practitioner rings are going to be mm, creating a peaceful sleep. But the the two rings that I would suggest, actually three rings, um, for you to feel into. Or maybe to use all in the same. But that is the grounding. The grounding is a great one because that is just connecting you with the earth. And um, so the grounding ring is a fantastic one for sleep. And you don't need actually the 23 inch large practitioner's ring. We have a 12 inch grounding ring. And the grounding rings create, a, or any of the tensor rings create a column of energy the size of the ring. So when you have a 12 inch ring, you simply place it at the headboard or on your wall if you can. I just put a little nail or, you know, I have all kinds of little velcro stickies to the wall you can use these days basically you hang your ring on the wall you sleep within that column of light and as you sleep within that column you do not need to have a ring that encompasses your whole body you can use a smaller one i would suggest that 12 inch grounding ring um the other one the highest potentials now the highest potentials brings a really peaceful feel through, but yet there is still a lot going on in it. So the highest potentials is one that I feel after you use it for just a few nights that it will bring a very wonderful, peaceful sleep. But we do have people that talk about using the practitioner rings and how they might have two or three nights of not being able to sleep as well. But after that, none of us want to sleep without the rings. So just depending on the energetics in you for your time of adjustment, but that's that's what I would suggest would be the grounding, the highest potentials. The other one was the nothing space, which we only have in the practitioner rings. Now, the nothing space is actually for people who have, if you are just, your mind is going, you can't get in the heart space to stop the mind, it's just going. The nothing space is phenomenal. You know, I actually have a, a few friends who are going through hard times of, um, you know, of significant others passing on, things like that. And so what they have found is that they love the nothing space ring, the practitioner's ring, that when they start to feel down, they'll just sit in that ring because it, that nothing space, it truly does just clear. It, it clears the mind. It clears everything um, in your field that's bringing you all the, the worry, everything, because it just when you really step into that nothing space field, the mind goes blank. Um, it's just you stepping aside for your light to come in more fully. So the trio of rings together would be absolutely the best. Um, but otherwise, yeah, sleeping within the rings is, is what I would suggest. And, and simply just kind of feel into it too and feel into what energy you know, just what I mean by feeling into the energies of the tools. So here's a, here's an exercise that I would love to share with you, and that is how to feel into energies. Okay, to feel into the energies, and we're going to be talking about the tools, the pictures from the website, because the energetics of the rings are anchored into the photos on the website. Or if you're just trying to feel energy of a tool, or just feel energies in general. Okay, we begin by we begin by being in the heart space. So to feel energy going into the sacred space of the heart. Again, we take the three breaths, the one from earth, breathe in that energy of the earth into the heart, breathe in the energy of creation, God, source, soul, you into the heart. The third breath, you bring both those energies together within you. It moves you into the heart space. Now from there, simply don't think, just be, just be. And you can look at a photo or holds or hold a ring or 
think of something and just close your eyes, allow your awareness to go to what you are feeling. This can be a situation. This can be a choice in life. Feel the two choices. If you're comparing, comparing is a great way to feel, especially in the beginning. Feel one thing, feel the other. Which one feels the best to you? Choose that one. That is also the way to make a decision in every moment. If you can't make a decision, stop going to the heart space, feel into the choices, feel what brings you the joy. But then also, again, you can use this exercise to fit, to begin to feel energies. Um, so like when I go to holistic fairs and we're running large practitioner rings over people and there's some people who are like, Oh no, I just don't feel energies. Walk them in. I walk them into the heart space and somebody's running a ring and lo and behold, they feel energy for the first time. So, um, that is really a grand exercise to do to feel into things and feeling into everything is a great thing to do anyway because you know truly we're stepping into a paradigm in a time where we're not making the decisions based on the logical um that comes with a lot of limitations yeah that's it's needed at times you know for for basic human stuff but i'd even argue that truly Feeling into the choices, decisions, and flows in your life is huge. To just be present, be in the heart, and feel into the choices. All right. So again, my apologies, you guys, that we don't have very many people on here this morning to ask a whole lot of questions. Um, I'm going to double check my phone one more time just to make sure I don't have any other questions here. Um, but if you guys think of anything, please feel free to ask. Um, let's see. We have a few different shows that we have just done recently, and I need to figure out um, the replays on those. One of them was the 8-8 Lionsgate that we did yesterday. That was a pretty fun one. It was just a 20-minute talk. Um, and then I did another one. I guess that one's not going to air yet here for a little bit. But, um, and I see no more questions here in regards to 50 questions Friday. So again, um, yeah, we'll be on lookout for the wisdom rings being released this weekend and also for the beta coil webinar. And that should be a fun one. So we'll do the beta coil webinar, um, probably on YouTube. We'll send out an invitation of that here over the weekend so you can get registered and signed up. And then with that too, we'll have the sale on the Vader coil, um, which will be a really good sale because that's what we're going to do with the tools of the week again is when we do a webinar, we will also have a deeply discounted sale on that particular tool of the week. So anyway, Thank you all for being here, unless anybody had another question. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys again, and we will see you soon. All right. Take care.